Greetings, Wanderer, and welcome back to Lonely TTRPG, the solo actual play and review podcast. This week, we are going to be playing Sworn by Ghostlight, The Case of the Evan Wood Effigers by Matthew John. Now, Sworn by Ghostlight is based on the Iron Sworn RPG system. So this is a little exciting for me. Iron Sworn is one of the biggest names in solo games, and I have yet to play it yet. I've been focusing on a lot of the indie games, so finding a game that uses Iron Sworn, exciting for me, I finally get to try it out. The haze of the moon's ghost light illuminates the words and sketches of your notes as it bleeds through your window. The charcoal eyes of six victims, each found dead in the Ash District, stare up at you, imploring you to find their killer. In your hand, you hold one of the crude carvings left behind at each scene. A figurine of a woman carved from the charred wood of an ebony tree found in the left hand of each victim. It is the only thing known to connect these poor unfortunates and undoubtedly placed there by the killer. A sudden rapping pulls you from your thoughts. Beneath your door, someone has slid a letter. You know the words therein before even reading them. The killer has struck once more. So, Sworn by Ghostlight is a GMless game intended for solo play or co-op with two investigators over one to two sessions. You play an occult detective in the haunted Victorian London-inspired city of Monabstone, where the moon's cracked surface bleeds ghostlight onto the world, where it festers as ghosts, necromancy, and undeath. Investigate locations and clues. Interrogate suspects and witnesses. Fend off assailants, solve the investigation, and close the case. The culprit, their motive, means, and opportunity are not predetermined in a sworn by ghost-like game. Rather, the clues you gather help you to envision them. When you feel you have all the information you need, make the final reveal and close the case. But will you catch the real culprit, or is there more to the case? Are they still out there? even now play to find out all right so diving on into this we start out with your character sheet which we'll go ahead and take a picture of and put on our playboard when we get into that then we move on into the rules starting off with envisioning your character making sure you understand looks motivation skills personality and weakness next up we have abilities and these abilities have bonuses across your five stats in any order, four, three, three, two, and one. So for abilities, you have edge, which is your quickness, agility, and prowess in ranged combat, courage, willpower, empathy, sociability, and loyalty, iron, brawn, endurance, aggressiveness, and prowess in close conflict. Shadow is your sneakiness and wits, expertise, knowledge, and observation. So in addition to this, you have statuses of momentum, supply, spirit, and health. And if your spirit or health are at zero and you must reduce them more, take from your momentum instead. If you cannot, your character cannot go on. For your action role, when you take a risky or uncertain action in the narrative, envision what you hope to achieve if you succeed and what you fear will occur if you fail. Envision which of your abilities applies and rolls the following dice together. Challenge dice, which is 2d10, or action dice, which is 1d6. The total of your action die and your ability is your action score. To resolve the outcome of your action, compare the action score to each of the challenge dice. You want it to be greater than the individual value of those dice. Ties always go to the challenge dice. Your action score needs to exceed the challenge dice to count as a hit. And of course you have three possible results. You have a strong hit, which is your action score is greater than both challenge dice. A weak hit, where you only beat one challenge dice. And a miss, meaning you lost out on both of them. Interpret the outcome based on your envisioned hopes and fears. The result may include mechanical changes to your status, such as plus one or two to momentum or spirit, and or narrative changes to the current situation. When you score a miss on a move, pick the most likely negative outcome or roll on the pay the price special move 
to see what happens. The main thing to remember on a miss, something always happens. The situation gets more complex, dramatic, or dangerous. Now, when the challenge dice roll matching numbers, the remarkable occurs. The outcome of the match should be based on the result of your action. If you're unsure what happens, roll on the Ask an Oracle table. So, on a strong hit, the match represents a twist in the narrative, something interesting, or a new opportunity. On a miss, the match represents a heightened negative outcome, complication, or danger. Things get worse. You can let the intensity of your success or failure frame how you interpret a match. Momentum. Mechanically, momentum allows you a chance to improve your result on an action roll. Fictionally, momentum indicates whether things are going your character's way or if things are turning against them. After making an action roll, you can exchange your action score with your current momentum to improve your odds at success. If you do, reset your momentum to zero and then resolve the action roll. You cannot exceed your progress score during a progress roll. Now your progress roll. Objectives that take more than one action to resolve, such as fights, investigations, or interrogations, use progress tracks to determine the outcome. Progress tracks start with all boxes empty and are filled as you succeed at actions. Assign the track a difficulty as follows. Troublesome, mark five progresses per hit. Dangerous is four, formidable three, extreme two, and epic one. To resolve a progress track, tally the number of marked boxes. This is your progress score. Then roll your challenge dice and compare your progress score to the value of the dice. Determine the outcome you would like for an action roll with strong hits, weak hits, and misses. Keep an eye out for matches on the challenge dice. When deciding whether to yet resolve a progress track, weigh your chance of success against the risk of continuing to mark boxes. It is not necessary to fill your progress track before resolving it. In fact, a weak hit or miss on a progress roll can lead to exciting new story possibilities. The case progress track is a special track with distinct rules and outcomes. Refer to the closing the case special move for details. All right, and to close the case, when you feel you have all the evidence you need, envision your big reveal, roll your challenge dice and compare your progress score. So, on a strong hit, you close the case and vision your reward for success. Congratulations! On a weak hit, something doesn't add up. One aspect about the case has led you astray. Create a formidable track for the last piece of evidence required. Once solved, the case is finally closed. Miss, you were completely wrong. The real culprit is still out there. Envision what happened. Or ask the oracle. Clear all but one filled progress. Continue the case. All right. So we are going to we're going to go ahead and set up our game board here. A couple things that we are going to explain prior to getting started. All right. Some terms that we haven't really talked about on this channel is the Oracle. So for those of you who are new to TTRPGs, Oracle is just basically a dice roll to decide the answer to a yes or no question. So if you ever come up to something you're not sure about, you would phrase your question as a yes or no, and then you would roll on your Oracle. And then the Oracle table roll will give you an answer to interpret. And based on that interpretation, you can go on. So for example, the Oracle in this game, we have almost certain likely 50-50 unlikely and small chance. So depending on what our question is, depends on how we would interpret that Oracle. So for example, I'm running down a dark alleyway and I'm worried that someone might be there. And I say, hey, Oracle, is there an ambush in this alley? and I get small chance, that means no, no, there's not an ambush. Some other things, as we're looking at our character sheet, as you can, as we're looking at our character sheet, we do have spots for the progress tracks and these progress tracks have 10 circles in them. The same as our case tracker. So with that, 
the way that we're going to play this, it's not explicitly said in the rules. However, the way that we are going to play this is I will continue with my progress tracks until I miss. And then once I miss, I will say that I have made all the progress I can. And then I will roll my challenge dice to see how well I did, like if I succeeded in that progress track. And then if I succeeded in that progress track, I will go ahead and add one success to my case tracker. And then when I fill up my case tracker or I get bored or we run out of time, then we will see if we actually resolve the case. Now, with all that being said, we do have a little bit of a uh, little bit of more admin work we need to do prior to getting started. So first of all, we got to go ahead and give ourselves a name. As always, we are going to be Detective Steel Stash for look. We're going to be a bald mustachioed man as I am a bald mustachioed man. All right, for our stat, again, we have, again, we have the array of four, three, three, two, and one. Reminder that edge is ranged, range conflict and agility. Heart is courage and willpower and sociability. Iron is our brawn, endurance, and prowess in close combat. Shadow is our sneakiness and cunning. And wits is our expertise, knowledge, and observation. So, I am supposed to be a detective. So, I'm going to give myself a four in wits. I am going to put my threes. I'm going to put my threes in heart and iron. I'll put my two in shadow and my one in edge. So, once again, I have edge one, heart three, iron three, shadow two, wits one. Four. So we're going to be more of a, more of the hardened detective, more of the hardened war type. Not so great on the agility we are getting on in years. It's been a long time on the beat, but we still got some of that old man strength. We still have a little bit of the way around with the people of the neighborhood, though time has made us a little gruff, a little curmudgeonly. And yeah, we're not great at sneaking anymore. That's that, you know, sneaking around in shadows is a young man's game. And we are no longer a young man. Now for our statuses, we're going to start off with momentum two, supply five, spirit five, and health five. And now we will dive on in and set the scene. On the western slope of North Hill in the city of Munastan, the ash district was the site of a great fire a hundred years ago. Built from the ashes using the charred surviving ebon wood beams and timbers, it is a mix of lower wealth residential and commercial buildings with a heart of debauchery. Cinder Street, the busy north-south thoroughfare of the district, is lined with theaters, pubs, brothels, and bystands for almost every taste. Work-weary folk trudge through the slopes and steps to work and back. Steel eyes and blades lurk in the alleys carved out by the street gangs. Loud, frantic markets and streets of trade. Music, fights, and carnal sights along Cinder Street. The streets are uneven, well-lit cobble roads crowded with people, slopes, upwards to the east, often so steep they have to wind back on themselves. Mazes of dark alleyways choked with mud and slop. Char Road, Black Stump Way, Rubble Street, Blaze Street. The buildings are tall black brick tenements with wooden balconies. Wattle and daub buildings with the charred black wooden beams of ebon wood trees. Pubs, brothels, and theaters spill forth heat, light, music, and comfort onto the wider, well-lit cinder street. Abandoned and haunted remnants of the great fire litter the forgotten nooks of the district. It would figure that it would be a night like tonight that another body would be found. I got the call not too long ago. Told to report to the corner of Cinder and Soot Street. Local cop was already on the scene. 
As I come up, some call it tips his hat to me. Or to standing on the scene examining a small car of effigy. Now, is Carly a friend or a rival? Oh, Oracle, is Carly a friend? And we got a six, small chance, Carly's a rival. I nod my head in greeting to Carly as I walk up. He sneers on over to me. Well, Stash, figures you'd be late as usual. Body's already cold. What type of work you think you're going to get done around here before before all the evidence is gone? Of course, you've been on this case how long? You wouldn't even have these issues if you could do your job in the first place. All right, so I am going to... I know it's for the NPCs, but I'm going to roll a D10 from Mindset to see how I should be reacting to this. And that is a... Four, four is desperate. Kali's words hurt. They do. I need to solve this case. This is the fifth body already that we found in this neighborhood. Something ain't right. Something ain't right out here. The brass is starting to really ride my back about it. If I don't make any progress soon, well, then Kali might just get his wish on replacing me. So, I am going to, I'm not concerned with the effigy because all the bodies have been found with that. Instead, I am going to kneel down and examine the body. And this is going to start my progress track as I examine the crime scene. And this is the one thing that the rules say to create a dangerous or formidable progress track for investigating the crime scene. Now, as Crawley doesn't like me, we're going to go ahead and go with Formidable then. We're going to go with the slightly higher of the options. So all my successes are only going to count for three. But, but I have a wit of four, so that's a plus four to my rolls. So, like I said, I'm going to kneel down and I'm going to examine the scene before me. Oh! So examining the body, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to get a five and rolling my 2d10 to see if that is a success. That's going to be a weak success. So that's going to be a weak success. We're not going to add, we're not going to learn too much from examining the body. We see the same, we see the same cause of death. We're concerned that we aren't going to get any new information off of this. One of the biggest advantages of serial killers is the fact that every time one strikes, you always have a new set of evidence to collect, a new scene to examine. It is only a matter of time as they keep doing what they do until they are caught. Unfortunately, time's not on my side. All right, so I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and roll on the clue table and see if see what else I can see. Like I said, the bright side is I got a weak success, so like I can still attempt to resolve this. So that's a 7 and a 7 is a letter or note. Now the interesting thing is most of the victims they were clutching that effigy in their left hand. But this one also seemed to have something in her right hand. And reaching down, I'm going to pry the note out of her right hand. And we're going to... The note is going to have a name on it. And it's not the, it's not the name of an individual. It looks like a business name. But we're going to roll wits once again and see if I recognize the business. That's another five. Oh, but that is a strong success. As I rolled a one and a four on the challenge, that is a strong success. Outstanding. So looking at the note, it appears to be the name of a pub. And given the, given the look of the lady, it would appear that she's a lady of the night. Once again, 
once again, the outskirts of society are being targeted. This is in line with the other killings as it would appear that it would appear that this killer has a type and that type is young, vulnerable women. Now finding the name of this, uh, finding the name of this pub was a huge boon. So I'm going to give myself a, I'm going to give myself a plus one to momentum as well for that strong hit. And I am going to roll wit one more time just to see if I can find just to see if I can find like a purse or some other identifying information on this poor woman. So when I go to the bar, I know how to ask around and that's a six. That's a much better roll, but that is only a weak success. That's only a weak success. So I find her purse, but unfortunately her purse doesn't have any type of identifying information on it. It appears to be just an ordinary purse but it does not appear to have any information for the poor woman on it. But at this point, I think I've pretty much observed everything that I can. So let's see if my logic is held out on this and if I make any progress in my case as a whole. All right, so I rolled a two and a three and my current progress tracker, I have eight filled in on my progress bar. So that is a strong success. So I am going to go ahead and fill in two blocks on my case tracker. I'm going to fill in two blocks on my case tracker because I have managed to make a strong connection. I've managed to actually make a little bit of a breakthrough. It's not just young women that this person is targeting. It seems to be, it seems to be ladies of the evening. Those who, those who are the most at risk and the least likely to be reported missing. Unfortunately, unfortunately the society that we live in does not, does not place a great value on them. And so they become easy targets, which is the unfortunate case of things. But I do recognize the name of the pub. I do recognize the name of the pub. It is the Fiery Cat, which is just down Ember Lane, which is a shame. She was so close to her destination. So I'm going to proceed down Ember Lane towards the fiery cat and I'm going to go ahead and ask the Oracle if I am being followed. So a four is a 50, 50 chance of me being followed. So I'm going to chalk it up to just, I'm just going to chalk it up to paranoia. I got a, I have a prickly feeling on the back of my neck that someone's watching me, but I have no strong sense one way or the other where it might be coming from or if it is if it is indeed true uh, it might just be normal paranoia so upon entering the fiery cat we're gonna go ahead and say that the fiery cat it is not a rundown bar it is definitely like it's not middle class it's definitely on the lower end but it is not completely derelict and not taken care of. It's not a dive bar by any means. It is a, it's a small place that is kind of homey, but like it is in desperate need of repair. There is the strong smell of stale beer and drunkenness in the air. And as I enter, there are a few patrons in there, but let's go ahead and let's go ahead and see if one catches my eye and I'm going to use the NPC generator they have here and I will roll 40, 10 to determine all these stats and then we'll just see how it plays out. So three, nine, nine, seven. So my eye is caught by Beatrix, who is a friendly street beggar who wants to obtain something. 
So as I walk into the fiery cat, Beatrix spots me. And I know Beatrix. I mean, she's a street beggar. She's usually on the corner. And she's friendly enough. She's, she's harmless for the most part. It's a case of... It's a case of she kind of has to be friendly because the nicer she is, the more likely she is to, to, you know, get somebody to help donate some money to her. And it seems that, it seems that her panhandling has been at least decent enough to buy her a, buy her a meal. And when she sees me, she smiles and kind of waves me over. Oh, Detective Stash. Now what brings you into such a place? Well, Beatrix, as you know, there's there was another killing tonight. And I found a note on the poor girl that had the name of this establishment on it. Oh, that's terrible. It's absolutely terrible. Do you know who it was? No, I couldn't find any identifying information on her. The only thing that I could get was her physical description. Pale thing, young, auburn hair, green eyes. Oh. And does Beatrix, I'm going to ask the Oracle, does Beatrix recognize that description? At a five, it's unlikely. Oh, how terrible. I, unfortunately, that doesn't sound familiar. I, I don't think I can help you with identifying the poor girl. But. And Beatrix would kind of trail off. And at this point, my detective senses are going to start tingling. And given, and I'm going to start interrogating Beatrix, honestly. I'm going to start asking Beatrix some questions. I'm going to call this a bit of interrogation. I'm going to start another progress tracker. Now, now given the fact that, actually, we're going to do, we're going to do one challenge first. Now, Beatrix, it seems that all the women who have been targeted have been various, various ladies of the night and street workers. And I know that you're not in that game, but all the targets do appear to be vulnerable women who have been caught unawares at night. And you and I both know that, you and I both know that you are also in that population of vulnerable woman. I know that you don't engage in, the, like I said, I know you don't engage in that type of work anymore, but a lot of these women have been women who might not have been missed. And I, if you know anything, I need you to tell me. And we are going to call that a, we're going to call that a heart roll. And depending on how well this goes, depends on how well the rest of our investigation is going to go. So that is going to be a six versus our challenge roll of an eight and a six. And Beatrice seems very unmoved by our plea. So that is going to give us, we're going to say that's going to make this, interrogation extreme we're gonna give this interrogation an extreme difficulty again it's one of those Beatrix doesn't recognize the description she hasn't really picked up on any pattern she may not have even seen anything so we are going to we're going to continue to try and empathize with Beatrix and press the issue that she is part of this at-risk population so if she knows anything Hopefully she will tell us. And that first roll of the interrogation is a nine. And but that's going to be a it's gonna be a weak hit. So we're just gonna go ahead and we're gonna go ahead and give one on our progress bar. Now, detective, you know that if I saw anything, I would absolutely tell you. But there have been so many there have been so many workers coming and going these past these past few weeks. It's been hard to keep track of all the new girls on the street. Though, not many of them seem to be coming as uh, coming in as of late. And I'm going to continue to press Beatrix to see what she means by that. 
And that is going to be a 7 for my action roll versus a 10 and a 4 for the challenge. So, again, that is another weak hit. Well, I mean, as you know, the best place to set up is on the corner of Soot and Cinder. But that's where that's where most of the incidents have been happening. Now, one would think that such a busy corner would be safe, but there are so many alleys. That there are a couple alleys that definitely lead off into different parts of the different parts of the neighborhood that it's not quite as safe as it seems. And with her mention of like the alleys and whatnot, I'm going to I'm going to press a little bit. Now Beatrix, which which, which streets are you talking? About? Are you talking about that alley that leads off down to a Smoke Street? And I'm gonna use my wit score for this one actually, because I am using my knowledge of the terrain. And that's a 10. That better be a strong hit. And that is. With a 3 and a 5 on the challenge, that is definitely a strong hit. And I'll go ahead and give myself a... I'll go ahead and give myself an extra check on that progress track for the strong hit. Now, I don't... I don't know for sure, but... I mean, there are... There are rumors about... There are rumors about Smoke Street. And it's just not the same that it was. And I am now at 7 of 10 on my progress tracker. And like it really feels like it really feels like I got all the information that I'm going to get. So, I'm going to go ahead and see how well I've resolved this current progress track. And that is an 8 and a 1. So, that's a weak hit. So, I have I have resolved. I'll add one more point to my case tracker. But I now have a new place to go check out. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and give Beatrice one supply. I'll take one of my supply and give it to Beatrix because again, she was in need of something and there was that implicit. She was helping me out for a little bit of help herself, but we will move on down. We'll move out of Ember street back down to suit road. We will, take soot back to cinder and a little ways down cinder we're going to find that alleyway into that alleyway towards smoke street and as we enter this alleyway as we enter this alleyway i'm, I'm going to ask the oracle if i see anything any type of like fight or struggle or you know anything like that anything that would indicate that something happened around the entrance of this alley and a three is likely. So I likely see something. So I'm going to use my wits to attempt to attempt to find a clue. And that is a seven. We'll go ahead and roll a challenge. Four and a two. So that's a strong hit. So I definitely find a clue in here. And let's see what this clue is. So that's going to be a D10 roll. And I'm going to find a cloth strap, uh, a cloth scrap. So as I'm, as I'm poking around this alleyway, I'm going to find a cloth strap. And this bit of cloth is going to, does this bit of cloth match the outfit that the victim was wearing? And the Oracle tells me almost certainly. So I find a bit of cloth that match the apron of or that match the dress that the victim was wearing and we'll leave this up to the oracle on whether or not this actually helps my case so oracle does this help my case any and that's a six so small chance so this doesn't really help the case this is not new information that was presented to me so I'm going to continue down the alleyway. I'm going to keep following the alleyway towards Smoke Street. And I'm going to come to the back of a building. So we're going to roll to see what this building was or what this building is. So that will be 3D10. And that's 9, 10, and an 8. 
So this is going, this building is going to be a flooded brothel that is dark, a dark flooded brothel. So I'm going to approach the backside of this dark flooded brothel. And that's, that's interesting that I would come up on a brothel when it seems that the victim, the victims were all brothel workers. So finding the back door, I'm going to find the back door of this brothel and Oracle is the door locked. Unlikely. It's unlikely that the door is locked. That's good. That's good. I mean, it's a flood. It seems flooded and abandoned. There's a lot of, there's a lot of water damage. There's still puddles around, which is, which is kind of amazing considering that. Actually, we're going to go ahead and say that these are, these are sewage puddles. And I'm going to pull a, pull a handkerchief out and just attempt to block some of the smell as I open up the door to this brothel and step inside and Oracle, am I looking at an empty room? 50, 50 chance that the room is empty. Well, that doesn't help. Oracle is the, does the room have anyone in it? And that is a two, which is almost certain. All right. So we're going to take that 50, 50 chance. And we're going to say that the room had somebody in it and we will roll to see who that person may have been. So that's another four D 10. So this room is, or the person in this room is going to be Elijah who is suspicious. They're the Lord's heir. And they are attempting to protect a secret. Now, as I enter the room and I see Elijah sitting there, I'm going to recognize him because it's the Lord's heir. And this is a very prominent citizen. And yeah, I'm going to be taken aback. I'm going to be taken aback by this. And as they are suspicious, we will go ahead and say that we'll go ahead and say that this line of questioning is going to be once again extreme as we attempt to question them to find out why Elijah is here. Elijah, my Lord, now just what are you doing in here? And we will use our heart for this because we're once again doing a social skill. Uh, ooh, that's five against 2d10. Four and a nine. So we did get a, we did get a weak success and Elijah is going to, Elijah is going to look at us and Elijah is going to look at us and he's going to kind of shrug. He's not really going to give any answer, but something, something seems off. Something seems off about him. I'm going to use my wits and I'm going to see if I'm going to see if he's holding anything. Or I'm gonna like, I'm gonna use my wits and I'm gonna attempt to observe his appearance. That's an eight. That's uh, that's a lot better. Versus a two and a six, so that's a strong success. And yeah, I'm gonna notice his disheveled appearance. And I'm gonna notice his disheveled appearance. And it's hard to tell if it's because he's hanging out in an abandoned, flooded building, but. It looks like he may have been involved in something and yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to once again, use my heart and I'm going to ask now, my Lord, you don't look so great. Have you been, have you been in any, have you been in any fights this evening? And that's a five versus a five and an eight. So that's going to be a miss. Elijah's going to ignore my question completely. And that's also going to like, that's also going to end this line of discussion. He's going to ignore me. He's going to turn away, which means that for this progress track, I have a six. So let's see what that does for my case. Oh, my case is an eight and an eight. So not only do I not make any progress, but it's an annoying twist. So yeah, no, I'm going to, I'm going to find his behavior and his demeanor highly suspicious. The fact that he's in an abandoned brothel, the fact that all of the victims have been brothel workers. I, 
I find myself very convinced that I find myself very convinced that he had something to do with it, which is really bad because I am about to attempt to salt like I'm about to arrest him based on this and in the grand scheme of things my case is very weak my case is at a three i rolled a nine and a one so i actually ended up with a weak success on that so a weak success for closing the case something doesn't add up create a formidable track for the last piece of evidence required so formidable is three progress per hit so something about this doesn't add up and now Elijah, did you have anything to do with this or was somebody helping you out? And I'm going to once again use my heart for that question, which is a five. One of the six, that is a, that's a weak hit. And we're actually going to, we're also going to ask the Oracle that. <laughs> we're going to ask the Oracle that question. The Oracle is a six. So, so small chance that Elijah had help so elijah just elijah just kind of looks up at us with dead eyes and shakes his head and he still ha he still hasn't spoken to us so i'm gonna go ahead and turn to iron i'm gonna use my willpower and i'm going to forcefully i'm gonna forcefully say then why did you do it what was the point of going after these poor girls like that and that is a six Versus a three and a one. So that's a strong success. And Elijah is going to... Elijah is going to smile sadly. I used to like coming here. Until the floods happened. And... It was as if... The universe... Decided to take away my playground. But... My toys... My toys were still running around. And with that, Elijah's going to, Elijah's going to kind of leap out at us. So we are going to attempt to fight Elijah back, which is going to be another iron roll. That's a seven. That's a great roll. Versus a 10 and a one. So that's going to be a, uh, that's going to be a weak success. So we do, we do manage to, we do manage to catch Elijah before he can really swing on it. We can't really subdue him. But we do manage to catch him. And now we have 9 out of 10 in that track. So we're going to go ahead and see if that resolves everything. And we roll the 6 and a 3. That is a strong success. We will say that everything is resolved. We manage to catch Elijah as he rushes at us. And the attack was very weak. He is clearly not in his right mind. And we were able to subdue him. And we will go ahead and take him back to, uh, we'll go ahead and take him back to the Lord's Manor. This is a, this is a very awkward situation. We're not taking him back to the Lord's Manor to give him back to the Lord, but so that the Lord is aware of everything that is going on and our insistence on justice being done. But that is the end of the case, and everything else is trial. And as trial is not our responsibility, that is where we will end it for tonight. So that is sworn by Ghostlight. Again, like I said, that is using the Iron Sworn rules. So, yes, you can pick this up and play this if you are not familiar with Iron Sworn. I think that it will probably play better if you were. It did take me, it did take me a hot minute to kind of understand and figure out how everything worked. Now, this is also one of the, this is also one of the first times that I've played a adventure that was this free form. So there is definitely a little bit more work on the player's end that needs to happen. I mean, this is not one of those games that you just kind of pick up and that you can fairly easily pick up and go with there is there is prep work that needs to go into it just in terms of like npc generation and things like that as a solo game as a solo game yeah 
you can do what I did. You can roll for NPCs and everything like that. And you can come up with, uh, you can come up with a solution. I would probably recommend rolling for your NPCs up front. That way you have a list of potential suspects that, but that's always the trick with, that's always the trick with mysteries is you have to, you have to at least generate a list of suspects and potential relationships, which this didn't do a whole lot to help out with as, you know, a standalone pick up and play. It's still fun. Don't get me wrong. I did. I did definitely enjoy it. And I am still looking forward to diving into Iron Sworn and talking about talking about that. But yeah, it's you kind of have to. I think to really effectively play this, you kind of have to roll several NPCs. Now it has tables for NPCs, so you can randomly generate some names. My recommendation would be to just roll three D like. Take each of those names, generate those 10 NPCs, and then just roll 3d10 for just roll 3d10 for the traits associated with each of those NPCs, as opposed to just kind of randomly rolling to see who you get when you get them. This is this is a game that does benefit from playing a little bit slower and just kind of sitting down and figuring it out. And as a as a module as it seems to be based as like an adventure module, like I kind of, part of me would have preferred if it was a little more filled out, if they gave you some suspects and more NPCs to interact with, as opposed to just the random table, just because, just because it would have added a little more to the world. Now in the grand scheme of things, this is a minor gripe. This is supposed to be a like this is supposed to be a small game. It's not like it's only a six page PDF and generating those generating those NPCs versus having them provided for you. Like that's a small complaint. This definitely as written, it definitely offers a lot more freeform exploration, a lot more kind of doing what you want. But also with that, you end up with an extremely small cast. I had three people in my cast of characters, including or not including myself. And one of them was Sergeant Colley, who is an NPC that was given by the module. So having having a couple more NPCs with you know, some character information and some motivations would have been nice. Having a little more detail about the murders would have been nice. Like it definitely, it definitely seems to be a custom setting. So it does reference things like, like in the clues, it does reference things like ghost echo, which it's not really defined. I don't really know what that is. So if I had rolled that, I would have had to have made that up, which again, not a deal breaker, but this is definitely not like, this is definitely not a novice friendly thing. Like if you aren't used to solo play, if you aren't used to TTRPGs, this is definitely not something that you're going to pick up. But if you are used to that type of stuff and you are definitely looking for and you are looking for more of that classic RPG, do what you want, sandboxy, not, not rail type game, then this is great. This is definitely, this is definitely for those players who are looking to do their own exploration and whatnot like that. Like most of the other games we've played on here, like all the other games we've played on here, you've been fed your prompts or you've been fed your... You've been fed how things are supposed to develop. And this has none of that. This this definitely feels a lot more classic TTRPG. Which, you know, not surprising. Like, Iron Sworn was designed to be a classic RPG solo game. So, this module doing that 
it is succeeding in what it is trying to do. Like, don't, don't get me wrong with my criticisms. It is succeeding in what it's trying to do. And like, I like my gripes might be coming more from a D and D centric type thing where the D and D modules definitely spell out a lot more stuff for you and for the GM. And then you're always like, you're always going to run into that issue, especially in solo of, you know, meta knowledge versus character knowledge, how you, how, when you are the GM and the player, how you separate those two, like that's hard enough when you're just a player in a game. And then when you also have to be the GM and guide everything that can definitely be a lot more problematic. So this does avoid that. This does avoid that issue entirely by not including anything that could really give that meta advantage. I do like the progress trackers. I like the, uh, I like the progress trackers. I definitely like it for the case. I kind of wish the rules on how that all interacted were spelled out a little bit more, but again, not a deal breaker. Very easy to, very easy to homebrew your own rules on that. Like I said, what I ended up doing was you know, what I ended up doing was I did my progress track for my specific parts of the investigation on a weak hit. Hey, good job. I got one point on a strong hit. I did give myself two, which is how I ended up with the three instead of two. I definitely lucked out on that final, on that final case roll, but I also played it as like motivations, not completely adding up. I probably should have used the Oracle a little bit more. Like I use the Oracle a lot. Don't get me wrong. I might've needed to use that a little bit more. And again, this is definitely something like, this is definitely a game that's going to benefit a little bit more from like playing in, playing in more chunks, like stopping and thinking about what you're doing. But again, I have like, again, with the podcast, I have limited time to do this type of stuff. I, I don't have two to three hours to sit and record myself while rolling and then thinking and then making my decisions. If you're just playing this by yourself and you're not trying to record it or anything like that, then it is like, you definitely have that advantage where you can where you can do your actions and then you can stop and you can think about it for a couple minutes because like any other, any other RPG you would play with a group, there's not a whole lot of instantaneous decision and action. There's, Hey, here's the scene. And then you got, Hmm, what should I do? What can I do? Blah, 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 blah. You know? And again, I, I definitely should have used the Oracle to flush things out a little bit more, but like that, that was on me that, that, that one is not on the game, but yeah, like in the grand scheme of things, super fun game. I like the fact that I like the fact that the mystery doesn't have one answer to it. So you can, you can definitely play this game again. It is very similar to weekend in the country in that regard where you don't have that one answer and there's no replay value. There's definitely replay value in this. You can definitely play this several times if you want. Definitely a definitely a fun game. Definitely worth checking out. It is $3 on itch. And you can find it at yuigaron.itch.io slash sworn dash by dash ghostlight or using the link down below in the show notes. So go check it out. If you get it, let them know that Steel Stash sent you. But I have been Steel Stash. This has been Lonely TTRPG, brought to you by the Black Dragon Dungeon Company. And remember, I must ask y'all to stay awesome. You've been listening to Lonely TTRPG, the solo TTRPG live play and review. If you've enjoyed this episode, please leave us a review. You can also reach us at Twitter at BDDC underscore pod or at Black Dragon Dungeon Company at gmail.com. If you really like us, you can consider supporting us on Patreon at Patreon 
dot com slash Black Dragon Dungeon Company. Thank you so much.